unanimous. Item 3.11 for action, we have the 2017-18 budget adjustments by Mr. Cooper. Okay, as you know, um, every time during the course of the year, we start with the school budget that you adopt back in June. And as you know, school budgets are not um, advisory in nature. Like most people think of budgets, it's more just the reporting of where's our income coming from and how are we using those, uh, that income uh, because they're public funds. And when either we get a change in the revenue coming in or expenditures going out, we make adjustments. So the typical pattern is about mid-year, which we're right about that point. Uh, we'll make an adjustment and then we'll do it again in June and I'll remind you when I get to the time frame how that works. So that we're just following a, a typical pattern there. There we go. All right, so I just want to remind you of the timeline because it sneaks up on us <coughs> real quick. And um, I think sometimes school budgets follow a calendar that seems a little strange because everything happens just a little earlier than you think it should, but it's what we have to do by state law. We're at our, uh, our mid-year budget revision right now. It's really just amending the budget. You're, you're not readopting it. You have a budget. You're just amending it on the changes that have happened. wanted to remind you that uh, next uh, month on April 16th, uh, we do the workshop. Uh, really, I, it's a chance to kind of let you know um, what I know about the state funding and other factors that are going to affect that budget that I'm going to present to you in June. And that's typical, too. So sometimes we know quite a bit about the state. Sometimes we have our student enrollment. We know a little bit about medical. We can tell you some things about what employee costs are going to be and those kinds of things, and we do that at the budget workshop. Um, it's actually June 11th. Remember, you have two board meetings in June. Uh, the one on the 11th is when you get the uh, proposed 2018-19 uh, budget. And then when we follow up on June 25th, you're going to approve the final amendment to this year's budget. And then you're also going to adopt the 18-19 budget. And one of the reasons you have adjustments is for the very reason, as you guys know, when we put that budget together last June, when we started this one, we hadn't finished the audit. We were closing out accounts as we go. So there's always a budget variance at the end where we've asked everybody, you're going to spend it if they are. And then when we get to the very end, they haven't spent as much, which, you know, it's just the timing of how that goes. And so the adjustment brings us back in line. All right, what kind of major factors that affect the budget adjustments that I'm about to show you tonight, and these are typically things that they don't change much year to year, so I just wanted to show you. Student enrollment is always a big thing. Uh, Mike mentioned it earlier. Uh, when the enrollment stays up, it's a good thing because it is funded on a per pupil basis. So student enrollment, we budgeted for 7,629 students based on our consultant and where he thought we should be. Uh, the blended account actually came in at 7,689. Uh, which is up 60 above the um, estimate that we had that we started our budget with. So that, that's a good thing. Uh, we're not up 60 students, and I want to say that. We're up 60 from the budgeted number. Uh, I would guess we're within one or two of where we were last year, if not exactly dead on. Okay, so just so you take it that way. Um, another thing that happens is many times when we're doing everything in June, there's a lot of volatility and timing in that state funding. I can't tell you everything because it hasn't been decided. We're taking our best guess when we're there because you don't know what version's going to be there. Well, I would tell you that this year that wasn't true. I had a lot of information for you. Uh, the one thing that I didn't have as much, and you're going to see it here at adjustment time, is what I'd call either categorical or grant funding. Um, you just don't know. And so, for example, we got a STEM grant in the middle of all this. Or if you remember, we were talking a lot about 31A money, which we kind of knew was coming. We didn't know how much, so we didn't put it in the budget. Typically, grant and um, any categoricals have the same related expenditure as it does income. In other words, they're telling me what I can spend that on, and I have to spend it. Uh, sometimes I can use something called carryover on some things, which means the state does let you, or the federal government, carry over some funds. That plays a factor, too, because you never know that till the end of their fiscal year, which is a little bit different than, than ours. Um, so carryover can be a factor. Uh, look, revenue factors, um, it's getting much better with the PPT, but the PPT is so new, and if you know much about that personal property tax, it's on a phase-in process as to what you can claim as personal property taxes, so we're getting a better feel for what that means. Um, the state makes up what we lose in our hold harmless collection. Uh, other districts, if you had a bond before 2013, the state also helps you on, on making up that, but we're not in that, and anyone that got a bond after 2013 
we're kind of unique in that we get it for our hold harmless millage. Um, we're, it's it's an interesting thing because it's one agency doling out that money. So far, we've gotten everything that we've ever missed. That's not a guarantee. I mean, that, that organization has X amount of dollars, and as long as they can fund us, they will. But I, I'm not here to tell you there's a day that that wouldn't happen. Um, we also have some developmental zones that sometimes play an interesting part, um, even confuse the city who puts them out there sometimes as to should they be collecting or do we have to refund that part back. They have things that are captured where they give us the actual money and we have to turn right around and pay it back to the, to the city. So that happens sometimes. Uh, we do have changes in special services, both on the revenue and expense side, including a funding we receive through the ESA. Sometimes it's because the special services funding is based on the year before. So you're always going to have adjustments the following year one way or the other because they're using the year before to tell you how much funding you get in the current year. And of course, once they know where you ended up in the current year, they come back and make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. And we do have budget variances. Um, I try to always be real conserva conservative and tell you the budget variance at the end is going to be 1%. Uh, I've seen it as high as 3 at the time I've been doing it. That's kind of rare. It usually kind of comes somewhere around 2, but I can't guarantee that. So uh, I'd much rather you make decisions based on a smaller variance. If it works out at the end, that's good. That can help you for the next budget. So try to do that as we go. Oops, here we go. So major revenue changes. And I listed a few more than I normally would. Just I wanted to show you the difference in grant funding here. The actual total revenue changes from when we had the original budget is uh, 3260950 When you look up there, I want to just point out one thing real quick on this in the next slide. Any of them that have a C at the end, means that it has a related expenditure going out the back side. Those are grants that are earmarked for something. But if you start from that very first amount that you see up there, state funding increases, it comes in different sections, but a lot of that's due to our additional 60 students that we didn't have. A little, some of it's BPT, but a lot of it is we had 60 more students that, that we got money for. Um, remember also, though, that Sometimes that raise in state funding is a drop in local uh, because you only get to collect so much per student and so they'll, they'll balance themselves off. MIPSERS is the teacher retirement system. Uh, a is um, basically used for um, uh, current costs that's given to the district to help offset so the fund only goes up so high percentage wise. I'll give that to you. This year there was a part one and two. Uh, two was um, offsetting uh, the state retirement systems, resetting its, its uh, return rate that they're projecting. And so they added some funding to kind of hold districts harmless as they do that. Um, I think the feeling is generally that they projected a higher rate of return it needs to drop a percent. They're doing it over a couple years and they're kind of funding this so that we don't have to bear the burden of them shifting that rate of return that they expect. Uh, the other thing we didn't know uh, last uh, year was that they were going to give us some funding for high school students, which they did, so much per student. You can see it there. Um, that's one. And I don't normally put the next one on there. Interest, uh, much better, because typically the interest for the whole year hasn't amounted to, to, to uh, uh, anything. You know, it's three or 4000 and interest is just up. There was no way to predict that, but we're doing uh, a lot better even there. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, after that, uh, like the Section 24, uh, those are the kids that are court placed. Again, that's always based on the year before. So you see a negative there. That's the adjustment. If you have fewer kids in actuality, so they adjust it. It's always off a little bit. Uh, everything you see after that, the 147C is a rate cap. There's a part one and two there. If it comes in, it goes back out, but it is a pretty big chunk of money. Um, 31A risk, big federal grants. Don't forget on the federal grants, too, there's some carryover there. Uh, we got a little more money from the ESA in a transfer. Again, that's a, a restricted, so it's got to see after it. We, just, we went to the Great Start Readiness Program. Uh, we really didn't know much about that until October and November-ish, and so that's in there. Uh, we got the STEM grant um, that we put in for, for 89000 We had an early literacy grant a year ago, but it came in a little higher this year, and we had carryover. We didn't spend it all last year, so they let us carry that over. Um, we have IDA, if you remember, that's a federal mo money for special ed. And if you remember a year ago, we, we did talk to you a little bit about, um, we were providing some services for the parochials, which um, federally we should have had money passed through to us to do that. And now it's coming through to us to do that. Uh, the TRIG grants, a little bit of technology money that was, um, that was left. Uh, we didn't know if we have any of that this year. We thought we'd spend it all, but there's a little bit there. 
and the same with the adaptive test, which is the state gives. So again, three, uh, 3.2, 3.3 in, in revenue. We go to the expenses, certainly not as many, but still you can see that the total <coughs> expenses, the net is uh, two, uh, 2 million um, A couple of things that I'll point out to you. We have had, it's been an interesting year this way, but non-budgeted uh, expenses. As you remember, uh, the summer started with um, digging a lot of trenches out Dow High to find a power cord. And we've had a few things along the way that we just weren't, uh, not expenses that you would expect. We had the early flooding, which, um, you know, places covered, but we also, you know, whether it be a manhole or it be something else along the way, um, so we had some there. Um, that increased about 195. The nice thing there, well, nice or not, we were able to offset that because natural gas, we've uh, been getting some pretty good prices on that, and the same with fuel. So we have not had to, uh, you know, uh, earmark any extra money for that. We had 195, but we've offset that. While I'm at that, I want to mention to you that one other thing um, that I that I did at this budget adjustment time is um, I did do a transfer of money. We do have out there, and, and, and we've talked about it here, and you've actually approved it. We have a transformer that's going to be pretty costly at high that's going to be done in July. So I have these costs coming up that we all know are going to come in July, next budget year. And so what I'm trying to do is I made a transfer to the Capital Improvement Fund, and that transfer then will cover those. So that now, and you'll see it doesn't really hurt where we're at, it puts that money aside so that we know the transformer is covered without having to take that out of what would be back, what would be considered the general fund. So I'm transferring over, uh, PRME is what we used to call it, but it's the capital improvement fund that's there. There's that, the pool will actually shift over there, it's coming from here mm -hmm. into that one. I'd like to do the radios that way, remember we talked a lot about the radios, First, when we get into it, the state police don't have their grant anymore, of course, mm. or timing, <laughs> I guess. But uh, this way, we'll, I put enough money over that will help us maybe do all the radios at one time so we're not dragging it out uh, over time to try to afford that. And also, as you know, we've been doing some work at Carpenter, and some of that work will go over into the next one. So there is a transfer in there. It wouldn't show up in the uh, expenditures, but transfer to site so we, we have some of that money in the capital pool. Um, like I told you, most of what you're going to see under the expense side all has letter C in it, which you can tie right back to the revenue that I showed you. It came in and has to go back out the other way. Um, we, I don't want to make it sound like they tell us exactly what to do. Um, Brian had to sit down with the 31A at risk money, uh, come up with how we want to spend it. But there are some restrictions on where you spend grant money at, and it has to be used in certain ways. Uh, but you get an idea of how the money's going back out the other way, all the way through. So again, take you to the general fund snapshot then. So the first column that you see is our original budget in June. All right, so the first thing that you're seeing is, is where we were when we adopted 1718. Now, the one thing I want to point out about that, and I'll get to the column, second column with this in red. The one thing I want to point out about it is that, remember that what you approved in 1718 was before the audit came in. Right, so some people glance right away and say, oh, you were at 17%. If you notice the bottom, you want to know what your fund balance is, percent of expenditures, and it's jumped to 20.7. Well, in actuality, when the audit came in, we had much bigger variance than we thought. So where we started off in June, um, expecting it to be about 11.6 million starting point was really 13.8. So you had a head start at 2.3 million. The fund balance was that much higher when we started never gets reflected till now. So I just want you to know that that part of that is when that audit comes in, you had a little better fund balance. You'll see if you add on that 3260000 you're around 82.4 million for revenues, about 80.4 for the new expenditures. And again, you can see those amounts out there. So that, of course, if you subtract those two, your surplus is going to be up about 1.9, just shy of two, 2 million there. Um, we hope to have a budget variance. I did it 1% of expenditures. Um, could be higher. It just depends. But we're going to be conservative on that estimate. So you can see our surplus uh, will be um, 2.7, uh, really about 2.8 million. And you can kind of see where we're anticipating, at least right now with the March budget, uh, where we'll be, and that, that is 20.7% of our expenditures. 
couple of things to caution you on there. That's 20.7% of all our fund balance that way. Don't forget that there are monies placed in the fund balance. One of two things. We have restricted <coughs> it in the sense of it was given to us to use for specific purposes. You cannot <coughs> use it for anything except, in this case, STEM is the biggest part of it. You've also, not that we can't use it, but you've also siloed some money. Um, you've, you've just reserved it. Uh, you did that. We started last year. We talked about it on printers, for example. Um, and we put a little bit of money aside so that if you do this right over five years, if you didn't have a bond to come back to and you needed to get the printers next time, you'd have some money set aside. Doesn't mean you can't spend it for other things, but you've kind of set it aside, just reserved it a little bit there. So I would take a guess at the unrestricted fund balance being uh, more in the range of 19 point something there. So it's, it's more like you, uh, at least a percent less than that. Uh, when you look ahead, um, again, um, and we, we'll talk again when we um, talk for the new budget and finishing up this budget. It's the same thing. We do have our balance, our budget process. Wanted you to know we already started. We meet with every building. Um, we've done elementaries, except for maybe one. We've done the middle schools. We do high schools this week and the other elementary. And we do all the big departments. And we have them come in and talk about how they would like to see their money spent. And we try to put a big picture together and share that with the agenda team and eventually uh, back, it's uh, we've been holding them pretty steady, so there hasn't been a whole lot to talk about because we've kind of held them where they're at. Um, as you know, the vast majority of our expenditures are always in personnel. We're a personnel mm -hmm. heavy uh, business, that's what we do. Um, student enrollment, uh, we do not have any consultant numbers back yet, but it's always a biggie when you look at budgets. What do we expect? Are we going to stay the same? We're going to lose some kids. State funding, um, you always hear the governors first, and lately it's been the most. Uh, uh, joyous, uh, you know, the best one. By the time the House and Senate get done, it changes. Mm -hmm. um, for us, it just depends on they can take money from the foundation allowance and move it over to categorical. It can be a bad thing for us sometimes because they can make the foundation allowance go up, but then the categoricals take it away another place. So well, it looks like you're getting more per student by the time you work it out, you're not. Or it could come out really well. So it's always hard to know. The governor's the only one out there so far, but it shouldn't be too long before at least the House, the Senate, one of them releases their version and then of course it's got to go back into committee and they have to work out that different parts that they accept. Mm -hmm. um, so the other part, personnel costs, uh, our staffing levels make a difference, the salaries. Um, we do know that a lot of our salaries, in fact the vast majority, are tied into the fund balance, the way it's trending. Uh, I'll be able to tell you at the budget adjustment where we think that's going to come at, which should be the, the higher level that we talked with each group. So that's a very good thing for the people that have work very hard for us. Um, categories, you know, when people are making steps again because they were froze or switching lanes, as we call it, when they've added degrees, um, those things make a difference. A retirement and what the state does there, if they ever took away the 147 money, that would be a bit of a troublesome thing. Um, same with medical. We've had a long run with medical. Uh, with Mesa, it's been 18 months. Uh, we will have, in the middle of this next budget year, a change of some kind. Uh, the question is, is it an 18 months worth of buildup and you know, half the year we're going to get uh, a higher raise. Hard to know, so we'll talk about that. Uh, the MACE, uh, the, excuse me, the ESA transfers, there's Act 18, Medicaid, and even the enhancement millage. Uh, Mike's exactly right in that. If that was not there, um, that's a pretty big chunk of money that would really have an effect on our budget. We'd have to sit there. And of course, the available fund balance. Um, it's, it was very good to us and got us through the lean years. Um, I think we're doing a good job getting it built back up. Um, you don't just keep building forever, but by the same token, um, you, you got to remember that there's a reason for putting that together and, and having it there so that you can get through the times that aren't so good. And I just, honestly, the state funding, everybody thinks it, it could be not too bad a year this year. Um, a lot of stories out there that after this year, um, which has to be an election year, um, after this year might not be so good. So just, just keep that in mind. Uh, like always, what we need you to do at amendment time is just to take a vote. It doesn't have to be a roll call vote, just to amend uh, your adopted budget with the changes that I showed you in revenue and expenditures. Uh, we do always make it available online, um, and it also has a spot on our transparency website. Every time you make an amendment, uh, that goes on there, too. So if I had to answer any questions, or um, you can go ahead and, and make a, a motion to, to amend that budget. We'll do the motion and then we'll ask questions afterwards. 
So I'd entertain a motion. I move we approve item 3.11, which is the 2017-18 budget adjustment. Support. Moved by Angela, support by Patrick. And we'll open it up to questions or comments. Bob lulled you to sleep with numbers. Come on now. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I do just want to say, I mean, it is, it is very evident how important our student headcount is. So many numbers are factored into that. So all of the things that we continue to do to try to make sure that our district is a district of choice um, is working, is evidenced by our um, study. Three positive motions and budgets, school budgets when you build them, <coughs> and it's FTE, but mm -hmm. it's also um, a number of employees, FTE the other way, number of employees you, you have. And the third factor is always um, things like bonds, which allow you to not purchase through there. Right. But Bob, caution you very much so that um, uh, lien payments are common. Um, there's, there's no doubt when you talk to legislators that uh, the school aid fund will stay healthy, but the general fund will not. Um, due to some of the tax breaks and different things they've done. Um, and so those are coming. Don't expect school aid fund to continue to carry you. In fact, this year when the governor announced 12240, I've already heard 100 at best um, for us uh, um, districts who receive the lower amount. So um, even this year, it'll be a nice amount, but it won't be what you, certainly what we were thinking going forward. And then certainly with the bond funds, we have to plan for the day that they're no longer here and we have lots of capital improvement projects beyond that as well. And so there's employee compensation, there's new programming, and there's taking care of your facilities that should come out of a general fund instead of always doing it the way we've uh, been doing it lately, which is a, a, a through a bond. That capital fund is so important to us and uh, it's important that we put that money away for things like the transformer issue we had at Dow and we just never know what's going to happen so uh, I think that's very important and then as the other thing you mentioned uh, siloing money and and putting it aside for things like printers in the future I think that's a, a smart uh, move and and we need to be cognizant of, of what is going to come at us in the future and I think that's a good way for us to, to plan for the future and make sure we have that money there so uh, we can deal with those um, issues when they come when they come to us. If I could also, I, I, it, it'd be remiss if I didn't say that uh, one of the reasons you have a big variance is because I think everybody in the district takes that seriously. So mm -hmm. you would not have a variance right. at the end if people were just spending to say, hey, I got that much money, I got to get rid of it. Um, that means every employee is uh, kind of doing their part. I guess I also would want to thank the business office, Lori Holderby and stuff there. They really keep track of, of all the details. It's uh, I got the easy part presenting. It's, um, uh, they're the ones that are back there with the auditors and everybody working out the fine details. So I just didn't want to forget the people that have helped us in the process to get to where we are. Right now.